we're back between together with the man in charge, Tom Conboy. Hey, how, how are you doing, mate? Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you going. Well, where is he going with that one? <laughs> <laughs> You're with Houston. Yes. And you have been for? Um, I've been involved with the yard since 2002. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I left for a uh, period of time and then just came back again three years later. That's I mean, right, because you were... Did yeah. To say where you were before. Well, I was. Well, I had Intermarine was my shipyard for a long time, but uh, I was Heeson 2002 to 2008, and then I focused solely on brokerage. And uh, that's when I met you. Yeah, with, with with Merle Wood, I still do brokerage, uh, and I'm uh, the exclusive rep for Heeson in uh, North America, South America, Caribbean, Mexico, and Bahamas. Now you're selling a boat what every two weeks it seems. Yeah. Uh, we've had good success <laughs> last year, but it's it's the team at Heeson, really. Okay. That's the team, and we got uh, a lot of good product. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we have we have models that start you know, using feet from, you know, one uh, one thirty eight to two sixty five. <clears throat> this year alone, we've had great success. We've launched two one sixty fives, white and von Tom. This one of them. Uh, this was in two thousand seventeen, bookends, and then we've signed a uh, two sixty five foot boat with four uh, 20 V 4000s. It'll be a 30 knot boat, not anything quite like it that been built. We also signed a 196 footer steel aluminum boat uh, called Project uh, Phantom. And then last year we had the record year of Heeson where we sold uh, six boats. And those six boats range from 154, which was this, <clears throat> to uh, uh, 180. So and you're selling these? No, no, it's a it's, it's a group it's a group okay. effort. We have a sales team at the at the shipyard, Mark Cavendish, Robert Dropman, and myself. Because on Facebook, it's always like, well, and he sold another one. <laughs> well, I've had some pretty good success, but it's again, it's the team. Okay, you know, it's the team. It's the shipyard. What you do, run. You know, I've been in this business my whole life, but you're as good as what you represent. So, how did you start? Oh, wow. In this. Years ago, sailing boats, traveling around the world. So you were a sailor? That's where I started, yeah. And you were American? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to tell me where from? Oh, from the Northeast. Oh, so you made the trip. I was just, you know, Ed, um, oh, I can't remember his name, Roberts, uh, where now works at Ocean Cove. Yeah, okay. So um, he's up in Maine. Okay. And he's resisted the move down here. Yeah, well, this, I've been, you know, I went to school out in the West Coast in California. I've been, you know, Florida's been a home base, but uh, I was a number of years, almost 10 years in Savannah with the shipyard Intermarine, but I've always maintained so a home. Intermarine isn't anymore, Intermarine is, is, no, is no longer. That ended in 2002 when I started with Heeson. Okay, and Intermarine was you? I had a partner, and uh, we, uh, my partner, uh, it just, uh, the, it had a uh, kind of an, a, it ended because my partner ended up, uh, he ended up, uh, not a good conclusion, let's put it this way. So the yard was sold. What, in jail? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much it. So how did you start a shipyard? Well, it was an Italian-owned shipyard. It was already there building military mine hunters, 188-foot military mine, mine hunters. Mine hunters? Yeah, mine hunters for the U.S. government. And, so what uh, are these mines that float, or are they? Well, mines that float, mines, mines that are submerged, mines that are, you know, so it was an existing uh, large facility building boats and then uh, about oh let's see it was about two trying to get my days there but 1992 93 I got involved with the yard it was owned by a large company called Ferruzzi Mount Edison we bought it in about 96 97 uh, my my uh, partner was a public uh, figure with a big uh, public company and they ran into their difficulties and we were collateral damage so the yard was sold blimey so you're you've You've experienced this industry in yeah. <laughs> every form. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the Heeson, you know, how, you know, Northern European boat building is, you know, there's a reason. It's that quite stable, isn't it? It's very stable. And it's, the quality is there. I yeah. mean, everything about it is just, it's just, you know, it's. It's kind of like the check marks, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a yard that's. Well, everybody aspires, I think, one day to own a, you know, a Dutch or a German boat. I what, mean, but it's not to say that, that, you know, you've got Westport sitting here, which is a yeah. great company, Delta. The problem is, is we've lost all of our American builders, which is kind of tragic. Yeah. And, and then what's happened in the brokerage market subsequent to that is that we're really lacking a lot of product that would normally be in, in uh, you know, in, 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 you know, here for sale, secondhand or otherwise. 
I was always told that the reason why Americans buy Dutch or German is because they can keep their anonymity. They're, there's wow, I don't know about that. Hard. I mean, you know, I think that, uh, you know, there's no real secrets. I mean, I think, uh, you know, there's been some great American yards, Christensen, Trinity, Palmer Johnson, you know, Northern, Crescent. Uh, you well, know, Fedship's th biggest client base is... Well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's still a quality, you know, there's a quality difference, you know, um, the tradesmen, the apprenticeship programs, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, it's the and, 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 well, in Northern Europe, it's, it's not, it's not a shame to work with your hands. It's quite a prestigious job. Mm. You know, I mean, uh, you know, the people that work in these shipyards in Holland and Germany, they're, you know, they've been there young, looking young guys, been there 25 and 30 years and, you know, their kids did it before them. So you know, very good paying jobs. It's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good thing. Where our country is going back to, because yeah. like now, if you look at our country, the most sensible thing a young person coming out right now can do is go into a trade school, yeah. earn a trade, because you're going to make a lot more. But we've been culturally driven that we should be sitting behind a desk and be, you know, working and money just falls out of the sky. Yeah. So we've lost the trade, and the trade, the tradesmen are still looked at on a very high level where. You work in a trade here, it's sort of like you're, uh, you're maybe a diminished role, which is really changing. Which is right? crazy. Well, look at the plumber, the electrician is making more than the uh, 18 million lawyers that we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we talk about this because um, we've interviewed uh, Phil Purcell from yeah. MISF yeah. and part of the Salted Jobs program about bringing young people back into working with that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's got to happen. It's well, because we don't, we don't have anybody, you know, kids can't change of tire. They don't know how to do anything. I mean, yeah. they know how to work on, you know, technology is good and bad. You it's know, terrible. That, you know? uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an yeah. a pure advocate yeah. now for, if you can lose technology, do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's going to keep going. But, but I do think you're going to see a, a big change in that. But it's just, you know, boat building is not, it's not easy. It's a lot of capital. You won't see any, you see very few mom and pop boat yards at this level anymore. It has to be owned by a large company or very well funded to be in business. Now for Heeson, they, from what I understand, they make, they're able to make the money they do because they keep a very consistent... Delivery schedule and spec boats. We build a lot of spec boats. Every mm -hmm. time there's an open slot, we start another boat. Um, for example... Even without an order? Oh yeah, we've, we've got in line right now, we've got uh, five spec boats in line. One for 19, sorry, four. One for 2019 and three for 20. And they're not sold? No. No, we built all the way to, this was built, this was a, a two-year build and it was sold uh, 30 days before it was delivered. You could have balls to do that. Oh, well, you have big bank. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got it. But it's, but it's, but the world that we live in is, is a uh, immediate gratification. If you tell somebody three years and here's the picture of the boat, they glaze over. If you tell yeah. them they can have the boat in a, in a year, they're like, okay, you tell them two years, like, it's just, people want stuff now. Is anybody else in this industry doing that to that level? Well, I mean, if you look at the order book in Holland and Germany, it's all pretty full. You know, FedShip has got 14 orders, Keeson's building 12 boats, you know, uh, Amels, Damon with their whole variety of stuff. Uh, Hawkford has got, has got a full order book, Ocean Co. Uh, you know, the sailboat builders have stumbled because there's not as many people building uh, sailboats. Mm. So like the Vitters and the Hoistman, and you know, they really don't know. I mean, everybody after 2008 in the United States, just it just got very expensive and uh, it's tough business to make money in. It is. Or I, I, if it was, everybody would be doing it. I mean, if you look under 100 feet, it's a pretty buoyant market. I mean, if you look at companies in the United States like Viking, for example, I mean, they are just knocking it dead. They're selling, you know, $10 million, 90-foot sport fish boats like people used to buy center console boats. If you look at Westport, you know, with their 112 and their new 125, you know, that 112 is uh, hull number 61 is coming offline. Highly, highly, most successful probably uh, boat that's ever been built over, you know, 30 meters in the world. Hmm. So there's pockets, but it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, you got to have a niche. You got to have kind of a good business model and, and yeah, you have to have good resources. Yeah. What do you like about the industry? No, oh, you know, there's no, no days the same, you know, no days the same. you know, you don't, uh, although you work in an office, you're not really in an office that much, you know, yeah. I don't know, look around. What do you think? I oh, know this is a tough day at work, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's like so, yeah, you do worse things.
Yeah. Well, thank you very much for spending right, time with us. All right, good. And uh, finally, we get you on the show. All right. Genuinely, I've walked by your stand. Totally fine. Well, you never say it, you're stupid. You always go, you know, probably the patented answer, even though it might be stupid, was let, let me check with engineering. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you can't tell somebody like that's stupid because you, if you insult them, you could lose the whole thing. Absolutely. And we have things that you, you want to say, are you fucking, oh, I don't know, you can do it. But I mean, are you crazy? <laughs> uh, you know, but you don't. You just say, you know what, let me check with engineering and get back to you. But like, what was an example? Like a pool that's just too big or a stripper pole or something? Ah. You know, I mean, I can't really say because a couple of these things have been incorporated into recent <laughs> boats. So, go so, I mean, if I say the one, which is, you know, if you heard it, you'd be like, really? But we do almost anything unless it's a safety issue. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it, it's all money. Yeah. You know, it, it, uh, you know, we customize the platform as much as we can. And, you know, so, but we start with the, plat the platform, meaning that the mechanical, the electrical and the plumbing are all well engineered, the scantlings. So water line down is all done. done. End room is where the end room is. The bulkheads are all kind of structurally or fixed. And then you do whatever you want in the interior or with AV or electronics or whatever you like.